Hey, it's Phil Torres from The Jungle Diaries, and let me just tell you straight. I've got a botfly maggot living in my back right now, feeding on my flesh. If you saw my last video, you know what I'm talking about, but if you didn't, let me just catch you up real quick. It is a maggot, it is alive, it is feeding on me, it is in my back, it is really gross, but it is also really fascinating. Now, I got infected when I was in the Amazon last month, and I've let it grow. And today, we are in for a treat because I'm going to the California Academy of Sciences and I'm gonna be talking to a dipterologist. That is somebody who studies flies. She's gonna tell us all about this botfly maggot that is living in my back, feeding on my flesh, and just being an awesome animal. Just wait until you hear how I got infected. It's wild. I made my way past the epic rainforest exhibit and down into the museum's insect collections. So every single one of these is full of flies. That's right. And every single one of these is full of flies. <laughs> That's right. If you like flies, guess yeah. guess you work at the right place. I do, yeah. Can you introduce yourself real quick? Yeah, hi, I'm Michelle Troutwine. I'm the curator of flies here at the California Academy of Sciences. And that is perfect because what do I got on my back? You've got a fly. I got a fly on my back. Yeah. And she's going to show us what is growing in my back. Ah! This is really exciting. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Okay, well, in your hand, you've got it. This is the thing. Yeah. So this is growing in me right now. Yeah. This is, this is a very special moment. This is cool for me. Yeah, yeah. And it's a really cool fly. If, um, if you can notice, it's got this really kind of shiny, iridescent abdomen or kind of backside. So it's a, it's a good looking fly. It's big, doesn't have mouth parts. Um, but to grow something like that in you, that's really... I should be proud. <laughs> you should be proud. I am so proud. proud. Despite yeah. the twinges of pain every once in a while. <laughs> does it hurt? It does. You know, I'd say that's kind of how I knew it was a bot fly and yeah. not just a bad mosquito bite or something. Because it was like every couple hours I'd feel this feel movement in there. And that's kind of when I was like, it kind of feels like it's alive. Yeah. Okay. So this thing is living inside me, or at least the, the larval version of it is. Okay. So did one of these land on me? No, no. So um, it's a cool system. Um, the process is a little complicated. One of these adult flies, females, flies around, catches a mosquito in mid-flight, and then actually lays her eggs to the abdomen of the mosquito. Um, then that mosquito comes and obviously bit you. And after the mosquito puts a, its proboscis in you, made a hole in you, essentially those eggs will drop off and work their way, a larvae Whoa. will hatch and work yeah. their way into the hole generated by the mosquito. Okay, so this thing tackles a mosquito, lays an egg on the mosquito, the mosquito then landed on me, like I got bit up by mosquitoes, yeah. and that I was aware of, but I didn't know that that mosquito was also drilling a hole, was essentially like an entry point for the botfly larva. That's right. And it dug in and now we're here, and it yeah. is still alive to this day, from the Amazon to San Francisco. Right, right, that's amazing. It is interesting to think about the fact that, you know, maybe maybe that mosquito actually did fly around to, maybe it bit multiple people, and somehow... Um, I was know, the chosen one. <laughs> the chosen yes. one. <laughs> this is so great. We have, we have three organisms here. Yeah. We have the bot fly, and we have me, and we know about these two, but there's one that happens in between, and yeah. that is the mosquito. the mosquito. Yeah. That's so crazy. Yeah. Okay. We are trying to track down the type of mosquito that this botfly likes to lay eggs on. So maybe I'd recognize the mosquito as the one that landed on me and bit me and put me in this whole mess. <laughs> so let's see if we can find that here. So we read that um, day flying mosquitoes in this genus Sauropora. Those guys right in there. This here is the tiny mosquito that likely landed on me and had a botfly egg on it. And this on the left is the giant botfly herself for scale. Now, how cool is nature that one day in the rainforest, this on the left tackled that on the right, and now I've got a maggot in my back. Okay, so this is it. 
this is an example of what has grown in me. And 1944. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so people have been growing bot flies in their bodies for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the first one. <laughs> no, no, you're not the first. So tell me about these spines. Why are they covered in spines? <laughs> Just to hurt me? Um, so those spines help them lodge in, right? It's, you know, kind of like fish hooks in the sense, right, that you they're little barbed spines. So once they're in there, you know, they're not easy to pull out, you know. So it's not like uh, some bird can land on your back and just easily, you know, tug out that... that uh, I mean, it'd be amazing bag. if a bird landed on my back. <laughs> yeah. What is happening right now? Oh, it's much better under here. Ooh, can't wait. <laughs> oh, what's really cool is you can see these hooks. I mean, they are vicious. Wow. That's pretty oh, cool, huh? my... <laughs> Goodness. So the bottom part, that's its mouth. And the top part is its back end, the little snorkel that we see. Yeah. And those hooks are incredible. So they're all backwards facing hooks. So if we tried to pull it out, it would actually- It would tear you up. Tear me up. What? So let, let's hear, what have you heard about how to get it out? Okay, the two, uh, the two kind of anecdotes I've heard about how to get them out are, one, it seems like the more reasonable way is to use a venom extractor. Um, so what does that mean? So it's, it's like a like syringe. A, it's like a you suction? Know, yeah, so you, because you need to have that because it's, you know, if you saw those pictures of those larvae, they're covered with spines and stuff, so you don't want to tear it up in there. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing I've heard, uh, and I don't know how true this is, but that people put meat, like, you know, slices of bacon on their, no on their skin. And then when when uh, the baby has to breathe, you know, it sends up a tiny tube and it'll just, um, you know, carve its way through that bacon uh, to get a breath and then it's easy to, to pop out, so. Whoa, all right. Um, okay, so we might need people to vote on whether I should go <laughs> the bacon technique, the venom extraction technique, or just go see a doctor, but. Bacon sounds yeah. sounds enticing for sure. I, I think entomologists are definitely going to be more experienced than the physicians in this regard. I mean, yeah, I mean that's that's probably true. Well, the bot flies are just entertainment. That's it's not like it's going to kill you. It's just fun because you don't have to go to see nature. It's coming to you. <laughs> oh, it was in Madre Dios, okay. on the uh, major rivers there. They all had bot flies, and I had bot flies. We all had bot flies. Their treatment was to take a terrible chemical, Murex, I think it was, they would like, if it was on their head, they would stuff this terrible chemical into oh. their head, you know, and stuff. But my approach would be, it's, it's the opposite of acne. You cannot treat it like acne. So it's not like something you just want to go over and then go, eh, 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 and pop it. That's the worst. Guaranteed okay. infection. Okay. Because they have barbs. Yeah. You see the barbs right here? Yeah. So you have to push down, spread out, and then it'll pop right out. Right up. What? Yeah. Push and spread? Just push and spread. That's the technique. Now that works everywhere if you can see it. Everywhere. You can get your two hands on. Yeah. You can do it. Mine's on my back, so. So. We can so push what? and spread. While I've grown fond of this little girl or guy growing in me, I'm still unsure if I'll be able to stand the pain and discomfort and grow it all the way to an adult. So what did I do? Find out next time on The Jungle Diaries.